Good morning. Welcome to Victory Baptist Church. Thank you for being with us today. If you please find your way to your seats, and when you get there, please remain standing as we start our song service with My Anchor Holds. Though the angry surges roll on my tempest driven soul, I am peaceful for I know, wildly though the winds may blow, I'm an anchor safe and sure that can evermore endure, and it holds my anchor. so small and frail by his grace I shall prevail for my anchor holds my anchor holds mighty tides about me stream perils lurk within the deep angry clouds will shade the sky and the tempest rises high, still I stand the tempest shock, for my anchor grips the rock, and it holds my anchor, blow your wildest little gale, on my bark so small and frail, by his grace I shall not fail, for my anchor holds, my anchor holds. I can feel the anchor fast as I meet each sudden blast. And the cable, though unseen, bears the heavy strain between. Through the storm I safely ride Till the turning of the tide And it holds my anchor holds Blow your wildest little gale On my bark so small and frail By his grace I shall not fail For my To lure astray, storms obscure the light of day. But in Christ I can be bold. I'm an anchor that shall hold, and it holds it my anchor. Holds my anchor holds. So your wildest little gale, gale on my bark, so small and frail. By his grace I shall not fail, for my anchor holds, my anchor holds. Brother Daryl, if you'd like to come and lead us in a word of prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for allowing us to gather together here. Uh, lift up the word, the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we just thank you that uh, whatever comes our way, whatever trials, tribulations come our way, we have a Savior that that we can trust and lean on, Lord. And Lord, at this time, I just pray that you'd be with pastors, as he uh, preaches, you just give him uh, boldness to preach your word, your truth, may it pour forth, Lord, and I just pray you help us to uh, be a blessing to you by paying attention to your word, Lord, that when you receive the message, each of, each of us in our different points in our walk with you, that uh, we'd understand the message you have for us today and help us to hold on to it and incorporate it into our lives, Lord. We pray this all in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen. Amen and amen. God bless you. you may be seated this morning. Uh, 
The Bible, I'm so glad that you chose to be here this morning. Remember the Bible says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some is. But so much the more as you what? See the day approaching. Let's say that together. Ready? See the day approaching. Would you please kindly, if you can see the day approaching, would you raise your right hand about now? It's getting close. Now it's going to get messy and it's going to get ugly, but hallelujah, it's getting close. And I'm excited about going. I cannot wait. I'm looking up. I'm looking out. I'm ready to roll. All right, this morning I'd like to welcome everyone to Victory Baptist Church, all of our regular folks and all of those who are visiting with us this morning. I'd like to just take a moment to see if there are any new visitors with us this morning. Uh, do we have, I don't think we have any brand spanking new folks in this section. Everyone over here has been at least three times or so, so that's a blessing. Anyone in this section who are looking for folks maybe haven't been here before? No, I would ask you to pray for the Monkman family at this time. Um, uh, uh, Gwen's son has passed on, which is Bethany, and Bailey's dad has left this world. And so please pray for them and that God would comfort them and, and give their hearts peace at this time. And we are glad you're here. We sure do love you. And we're so thankful that your family's here. Look at... I know I don't have time, but just look at the progression here. Bethany, who invited your mom to come here? Myrna invited your mom, and because your mom came, you guys came. Because you guys came, Bailey came. Because Bailey came, Bill and his family came. Because Bill came, uh, his mom came. So, see, that's, that's a blessing. God bless you folks at this time. So, and that's what Christianity is all about, is reaching people and helping people and showing them the way. All right. Anyone else in this section brand new, first-time visitors? No? Anybody for the very... First, who are we pointing at, Abby? Who are we pointing at? Help me. Oh, I po in these folks in front of you? I'm talking about the folks. I'm sorry, sir. Can you tell me your name again? Rick, Rick and? Carol. That's right. This is only second time. Okay. Well, you know, all right. Here's the rule. If you come more than three, we never acknowledge your presence again. Okay. okay. Thank you for being here. Let's welcome this morning to Victory Baptist Church. Good to have you. Amen. We're grateful for our visitors this morning. Okay, it's good to see Brady. Brady hadn't been in a while. Thanks for being here, buddy. Glad to see you. All right. Anyone else? First time, brand new, never been here? Anyone like that? Anyone in this section at all? Do we have any visitors this morning at all? Yes, ma'am. Could you please uh, let us know your name? If you'd like to say hello. Tabitha, good to have you, Mrs. Weeb. Nice to see you this morning. Let's welcome Mrs. Weeb to church this morning. Thank you for being here. All right. I think that's everybody. Now that we've recognized our uh, visitors... And uh, friends, let's stand, stretch, tell someone you love them, tell someone you're glad to see them in church this morning.
focused in all other ground is sinking sand all other ground is sinking sand my hope is built on nothing less than jesus blood and righteousness i dare not trust the sweetest frame but wholly lean on jesus name on Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. When darkness fills his lovely face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. His oath, his covenant, his blood supports me in the whelming flood. When all around my soul gives way, he then is all my hope and stay. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. When he shall come with trumpet sound, oh may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone, faultless to stand before the throne. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. If you're not standing on Christ, you are stinking, so be on that rock. Please remain standing as we continue as we sing, God is our refuge and strength. <clears throat> I will not fear, though the earth gives away, and the mountains fall to the sea. The waters may roar, and the mountains may shake, I know that He will take care of me. God is a refuge and strength. shatters the spear a mighty fortress is he no more will i fear for the battle is his i know that he will take care of me god is our refuge and strength god is our refuge and strength, always present in time of trouble. God is our refuge and strength. There's another verse on the wall, but I think that's all we got. <laughs> Let's continue with Because He Lives. You may be seated for this one. God sent His Son, they called Him Jesus, He came to love, heal and forgive, He lived and died, to buy my pardon, an empty grave is there. 
Stand with me as you sing our last congregational, I Need Thee Every Hour. <clears throat> sing it with your heart because you know there's nothing you can do without Him. I need thee every hour, most gracious Lord. No tender voice like thine can peace afford. I need thee, oh, I need thee. Every hour I need thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior, I come to Stay thou nearby, temptations lose their power when thou art nigh. I need thee, oh, I need thee, every hour I need thee, oh, bless me now, my Savior, I come to I need thee every hour in joy or pain. Come quickly and abide, or life is vain. I need thee, oh, I need thee. Every hour I need thee, 
I need Thee every hour, most holy one. Oh, make me Thine indeed, Thou blessed Son. I need Thee, oh, I need Thee every hour. I need Thee, oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come to thee. Please remain standing for the reading of God's word, and then we'll have a special. Please open your Bibles with me to the last book of the Bible, book of Revelation. Well, actually, it's the second to last. It's just before the book of Maps. But please go. <laughs> you'll get that later. Go to Revelation chapter 15 as we continue making our way through the book of Revelation. We're only going to be reading four verses this morning. Please turn with me to Revelation chapter 15. We'll read responsibly as is our custom, and we'll read verses 1 through 4. The Bible says this in Revelation chapter 15, verse 1. And I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous. Notice those words, great and marvelous. Seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them is filled up the wrath of God. had gotten of the victory. And they and they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. May God bless the public reading of his word. Let's pray together, please. Heavenly Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, our King of kings and Lord of lords, not only creator and sustainer, but personal Lord and Savior, thank you for living inside of us. Thank you for saving our souls, Lord. And I pray for anyone here who knows Jesus in their head, but has never asked them to save them. I pray today might even be that wonderful day to become a child of God. And Father, now we plead the blood of Christ over this place. We ask that you would protect us, put a hedge about us in a great and mighty way. And Father, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem this morning. We ask that you'd watch over your city and your people and that place, Lord, at this time. We pray that you'd encourage us now. Father, help us to go away closer to you and believing stronger because we obeyed the Bible and we gathered, as the Bible says. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, God bless you. You may be seated. He walks among us, all that he does, all of his mercy and all of his love. If the pen of the writer could write every day, not even this word could ever contain how much I've been blessed. Warmth in the winter, flowers in Laughter in summer, changes of leaves, food on my table, a good place to sleep, clothes on my back, shoes on my feet, oh, I have been blessed. I have been blessed, God is so good to me, precious are his thoughts of you. So I 
I'll just thank him for being so kind. God has been good, so good. I have been blessed. Arms that can raise, a voice that can talk, hands that can touch, legs that can walk, ears that can listen, and eyes that can see. Oh, I've got to praise him as long as I breathe, cause I have been blessed. A father and mother who nurtured and raised, sisters and brothers, memories made, our pastor to lead us, this altar to pray. Stripes that can heal and blood that can save. Oh, I have been blessed. I have been blessed. God is so good to me. Precious are his thoughts of you and me. No way I could count them. There's not enough time. So I'll just thank him for being so kind. God has been good, so good. I have been blessed. We live in a country, the greatest on earth. Our flag stands for freedom and what it is worth. From Vancouver to St. John's to Montreal, all have gave some, but some gave it all for me to be blessed. He's my shoulder to lean on when I am down, the rock where he leads me when I'm overwhelmed, the place where he hides me under his wings. It's not just a song, it's the reason I sing. I have been blessed. I have been blessed. God is so good to me. Precious are his thoughts of you and me. No way I could count them. There's not enough time. So I'll just thank him for being so kind. God has been good, so good. I have been blessed. Yes, God, you've been good, so good. We have been blessed. Amen. Thank you, ladies. Appreciate that so much. And it's so wonderful. Boy, I tell you what, if that doesn't move you, you need to go down the morgue because <laughs> that was a blessing. Amen. Thank you, ladies. Appreciate that so much. This morning, I'm going to talk to you, and this is our chapter 15 today. I'm going to be actually talking about singing songs. We will be singing forever. Do you understand that at the end of time, when you leave this world, you're not going to be working and buying and selling and marrying and giving into marriage, but you're going to spend the rest of forever saying, holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty. Amen. Praise the Lord God of heaven and earth, and we will sing his praises forever and ever. That's why he made us, and that's why he's going to keep us going forever, is so that we can worship and glorify him because he is truly worthy. I want you to note with me what the Bible has to say in verse number 1 in verse chapter 15. And I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them is filled up the wrath of God. This is a great and wonderful sign up in the heavens, and it is intended to stir people to bow before the God of heaven, who is just. Yes, God is love. Let's say that together. Ready? God is love. But that's not where it stops. God is also just. Let's say that. God is just. Say it. Ready? Begin. God is just. 
and God's justice is ready to be executed during the tribulation seven-year period upon the earth. His wrath against the wickedness and the evilness during the tribulation will be dealt with, and justice will be served. And he is ready to execute it in chapter number 15. God is ready to clean up the earth and to bring in his holy reign in chapter 15 of goodness and godliness and righteousness and love and joy and peace and glory and, yes, justice. For those of you who are not familiar with the book of Revelation, we've been making our way uh, through. This is our 15th chapter in the book of Revelation. And Revelation is a scary book. How many have ever met somebody or heard something like this? I like the God of the Jesus of the New Testament, but I don't like the God of the Old Testament. How many ever heard that kind of talk? I sure have. Boy, oh boy. They didn't read Revelation when they said that. Right? That's the God of the New Testament. They didn't read Revelation when those statement, that statement was made. But the Bible teaches us in the book of Revelation, uh, at the start of chapter 4, the Christians are going to fly through the sky. Do you say, do you really believe they're going to fly through the sky without airplanes and balloons? Why wouldn't I? Absolutely I believe that. As much as I'm standing here right now, I believe one day, someday, one generation will rocket from earth to heaven, body and soul and spirit and all, and go straight to be with Jesus forever. If you're saved. And after that, I believe with all my heart, the Bible clearly teaches in the book of Revelation there's coming seven years of tribulation, what we call or classify as literally, literally now, hell upon the earth. And the son of Satan will come and rule for seven years. The son of God walked for three and a half years ministering amongst the people for 33 and a half years on earth. But then the son of Satan is coming to rule for seven years concise, short, quick years, and he's going to make everyone take his mark. Everyone's going to take the mark down here except those who resist. You want to buy, you're going to have to have the mark. You want to sell, you're going to have to have the mark. You want to shop, you want to, hey, watch this. You want to feed your starving children, you're going to have to take the mark in the tribulation period. How many of you are saved? Raise your right hand. All right, put your hands down. How many of you are glad that you'll never have to go through the tribulation? Can you say Amen. <laughs> And so the tribulation will come, and the plagues will come, and the plagues are reiterated, and they're reiterated again in the book of Revelation. And now they're being reiterated for the third and final time. So my declaration to you, but I'm not here to help the people in the tribulation. I'm here to help the people here and right now. So my declaration to you this morning is simply this on the wall. People must prepare and repent and get ready before it is too late. I can't help the tribulation pe people in the future. And I can only help the people in 2024. I can only help the people that will come to church. And can I say this politely and kindly? I'm, I mean, I hope that I encourage and maybe edify a little bit the people that watch us online. And there are some folks that watch us online. But there is no substitution for the gathering and the called out assembly of the local New Testament Bible preaching church. And that is what you need. And that is what I need. And we must prepare and repent and get ready before it's too late. Now, some of you in this room that you may know about Jesus in your head, but you've never accepted him into your heart. Today needs to be that day. So my question after my declaration, my proposition is simply this. Are you ready? Let's ask that question out loud together. Ready? Are, one more time. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready for the rapture? Are you ready for the end of your life? Are you ready to depart from this planet and to go into the next life? If you're not ready, you need to get ready even today. And this morning I'd like to just spring right into my first point, simply this. And I saw another angel, verse 1, in heaven, great and marvelous. Sorry, I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous. Seven angels having seven last plagues. For in them is filled up the wrath of God. God doesn't let it slide. He's long-suffering. Praise God for that. He's patient. Praise God for that. He is love. Bless his name forever for that. But God does have wrath. And he will make this right. He will fix things. And that is exactly what God says. The wrath of God. There is a wrath that will come and deal with the problems in the earth. I want you to notice that these are the seven vile judgments. And this is the last re reiteration of them. Chapters 15 and 16 make up about a third 
of the uh, review of the tribulation period. Now, this scene takes place up in heaven that's about to happen. These uh, great and wonderful, awesome signs are up in heaven. A sign that is so great and so awesome is this. The seven angels with the seven judgments are coming, and God calls them great and mighty signs. These don't sound very great, but they sound absolutely scary to me. But God says they are great and mighty, a sign of God's wrath. And, you know, there are some people in the tribulation that won't be under God's wrath. They will hide, evade. They will be the true preppers, if you will. They will avoid connection with the mark of the beast. And, you know, I, again, I can't help those folks, but I'd like to say to you this morning, you need to endure your challenges. We think it's tough when they run out of, you know, soy latte milk at Tim's or something, and we can't get our coffee the way it is. First world problems, right? You know, or the electricity goes out for 20 minutes, enduring suffering and trials and temptations. But seriously, we do. We have these first world problems that we think are so horrendous and they're so meager and small. But there are things in your life and mind that are very, very real. And they're very, very difficult. And we need to learn to endure these problems. We need to endure, like these people are going to endure the seven years of tribulation. You and I as God's children need to learn to endure our problems. Let's look at James chapter 1 verse 12 on the wall. Let's look at this really quickly. Let's read this verse out loud together. This is some good instruction for you and I on how to handle our problems in life. Ready? Begin. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to them that love him. If you love him, say amen. All right. Now, we need to learn to endure temptations. We need to learn to uh, uh, be patient in this life. We need to press on and walk with God and handle it when it comes. Temptations are going to come. Battles are going to come. Struggles are going to come. It's not that they won't come. The question, Roberto, is this. Talk about a struggle. How are we going to handle it? How many years do you wait for your kidney? Eight years of, how many years of dialysis? Eight years of dialysis. But it's always the same. Relax, I trust God. Relax, I'm praying. Relax, I'm praying. Relax, I'm trusting God. God is good. God sees. I'm going to pray. That's how you handle your tests and your trials and your temptations. I have a whole row here of family that just said goodbye to a loved one. The way to handle this is you need to trust the Lord, rely on the Lord, depend on the Lord, and God is good. Your family members may fail you. Your pastor will fail you, but God will never fail you. And he will see you through this season of sorrow and darkness right now. I promise you, he's that good. He'll take care of you. Yeah, think of the ball children and the pain they suffered and heartache they went through and how God has provided an opportunity for them. And you know what? I think about you guys a lot and I do pray for you regularly. I want you to know that you have done a most admirable thing and a noble thing. God bless you both for what your, your choices were. But it's going to be hard. And as everybody gets older, yours and your um, the, the adopted kids, as you get older, there's going to be challenges, there's going to be tests, there's going to be conflict. I'm sure there is already, right? You can't wear that sweater. I'm wearing that sweater. You can't have those shoes. Hey, he ate the last piece of toast. You know the routine. Listen, but listen. God will see you both through this. God, don't let the devil tear your hearts apart. God will see you through. Trials and tests will come. The question is not if. It's how you and I as God's people handle them. Now, the, some people in the tribulation will not handle them. They will take the mark. They will uh, in, uh, engage in the system. They will bow down before the image of the beast. They will give their lives to Satan, maybe some unbeknownst. But some will resist and say no. And those signs will come from heaven. And if you look at it, again, it goes on and it talks about in verse 2. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire. And them that had gotten the victory over the beast, those are those uh, survivors and resistors, and over his image, and over his mark, and over the number of his name, and stand on the sea of glass, having their harps of God. Now I want you to see that here is a sea of glass, but underneath it is fire. 
But I want you to cross-reference this on the wall, if you would, Revelation 4, 6. Look at this. Now, this one says, sea of glass with fire. Now, look at this. This is the same, uh, situa- same thing, but described slightly different. And before the throne, there was a sea of glass like unto crystal. And in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts. We've talked about them for months now. We know who the four beasts are, full of eyes before and behind. Eyes before and behind. Man, that sounds like my wife. She sees everything this way, that way, and the other way. But I only see two eyes, though, right? Hey, your mom saw everything, right? She heard everything. Listen, listen. She sees everything even without the extra eyeballs. But I want you to notice in the sea of glass, there's no reference to fire. Because fire, later in chapter 15, back in our passage, is talking about God's judgment. Fire and judgment go hand and glove in the Bible. So this time it's not just that calm sea of glass. By the way, I believe with all my heart there is a crystal sea, solidified sea, a frozen sea like the Arctic. But it is above the blue sky. It is above the bl- blackness of space and stars. It is a crystal frozen sea above the universe. You say, you believe that? Why wouldn't I? It's in the book of Revelation. Sure I do. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so underneath that, it's fire because God is getting ready to send his judgment. So number one is the seven signs by the angels. But number two, I want you to see the sea of glass above the stars, the sea of glass above the stars. This is an indication that God is ready to flip the switch. And things are going to get very messy and things are going to get very ugly down here. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire. And of them that had gotten the victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark and over the number of his name, stand on the sea of glass, having the harps of God. Now, I want you to notice, again, they endured. They got victory over the beast and the mark and everything. When I was a headbanger in the 80s as a kid and I had a mullet, wouldn't I look good with a mullet? (laughs) Haley, why are you shaking your head no? Do you know how good I'd look with a mullet and spiky, punky hairdo and all that craziness in the 80s? But you know what? We used to go to those headbanger music things. And by the way, that garbage isn't music. It's the noise of war. I'll sit on the front row and say amen if you won't. Amen. That headbanger heavy metal craziness, that's not music. That's the sound of war. Okay, that's seven of you. That's the sound of war. Amen. And so uh, I go that stuff, they make noise, and those crazies would sing about the mark of the beast, ah, the mark of the beast, ah, the mark of the beast, ah. and we all knew it was real. Every drugged up teenager in the, in the universe in the 80s knew that stuff was real, but the problem is we all laughed at it, but we knew deep down inside it was real, because it comes out of that book, and people are going to have to take that, and they say No. But you know what? If you're saved, you and I don't have to worry about that. But you know what we need to do? We need to say no to Satan on Monday morning. Right, Renee? We need to say no to Satan Monday morning. When the garbage comes at work, when the filth comes, when the phone's tempting us to look and go to wrong places, when we want to do the wrong thing, when we want to uh, pour out venom on the Internet... We need to say no to Satan and no to our own flesh. Can somebody help me out this morning? It's awful quiet in here. I think maybe maybe that's because we're resonating and the Holy Spirit's doing some good work maybe and speaking, saying, oh, me instead of amen. And so we need that, right? You understand? We need to resist the temptations of that because they said no to them. They will say no to the mark. They will say no to bowing down before the idol. Now, I know you and I... No better than to worship porcelain statues or golden idols, etc. But there are things that you and I create and make into our own Christian version of idols. I'm going to get very unintangible right now. How about this idol? The idol of selfishness. My unholy trinity, me, myself, and I. The idol of laziness. I can't be bothered getting up and going. I'll just watch online. Laziness. I'm too tired to go to prayer meeting on Thursday night. The idol of laziness. I understand people are contractually bound and they can't make it sometimes to Sundays and to Thursdays, etc. like that. I understand that. And God understands that. God understands that. But to say, you know what? I'm so lazy I can't be bothered. That becomes your idol and you've bent the knee to the idol. 
It's true. Now, don't get me wrong. The crowds have been good on midweek service and prayer meeting. We need to pray together. I'll do it at home. I can watch TV and touch the screen and hallelujah, shandalai, bow tie. Get out of here with that stuff. We need to pray together. How many love somebody in this room? All right, say amen. amen. Then there's somebody you need to be here with to pray with. Then there's somebody you need to be here with to pray for. And we need that. We need to stop bowing to the idols. We need to stop bowing to the mark of the beast. We need to, this is all just application for you and I. You know this is all real and it's going to happen. It's going to be scary. But you and I need to say no to the flesh and no to the world and no to the devil. Because he is very busy. He is alive and well hanging around Victory Baptist Church oftentimes. But number two, I want you to see there is the sea of glass above the stars. And the fire represents the judgment that will be poured out during the tribulation period of time. The seven angels are going to pour out the seven judgments. We've been studying them for months now. You know what they are. Water turns to blood. They're very parallel with all the plagues in Egypt. But I want you to see number three this morning. Number three, look at verse three. Now they're up in heaven. God's getting ready to flip the switch. Verse 3, and they sing the song of Moses and the servant of God and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are thy ways, thou King of the saints. Who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name? For thou only art holy. For all nations shall come and worship before thee, for thy judgments are made manifest. The seven angels, the sea of glass, and the song of Moses. Now, the song of Moses, what does that mean in chapter 15? The song of Moses. The Bible teaches us that they sang the song of Moses when God delivered them from the hand of Pharaoh through the Red Sea. How many understand that they had their backs against the wall thousands and thousands of years ago with the leadership of Moses, more than a million Jews coming out of slavery. That's a picture of you and I coming out of the world, coming away from bondage, coming away from slavery, and becoming set free. If the Son makes you free, you are free indeed. Hallelujah. You are free from slavery. Well, here comes the type of the devil, a picture of the devil. His name is Yul Brenner, Pharaoh of Egypt. Even Daryl didn't laugh, man. And Charlton Heston is standing with his rod at the Red Sea. And he goes, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. And we know that the Red Sea was parted. And we know that the children of God crossed on dry ground. And God will make a way and God will deliver when you have your back against the wall. When I have my back against the wall. When there's no way out. You're between a rock and a hard place. You're between Pharaoh and the water. You're between the devil and nowhere else to run. God will deliver. He will. And that's what the song of Moses is all about. Is when they got to the other shore and then they watched Watch the ocean, uh, excuse me, the Red Sea crush and destroy the armies of Egypt. And you can find that uh, in Exodus chapter 15. They sang the song of Moses and they sang the praises to God. Now, we know that centuries later, the children of Israel went into slavery in Babylon. And then God brought them back into the land. And then again, they sang a reference to the song of Moses. Do you have Psalms 118, 14, guys? Psalms 118, nope, it's not on the wall, okay, Psalms 118, 14 is a reference, it says this, the Lord is my strength and song and has become my salvation. They sang the song of Moses when they went back into the land, so they sang it against, after Pharaoh, they sang it when they returned home after Babylon, and look at me now, they will sing it up in heaven at the end of the tribulation. The song of Moses is the song of Israel. It's a song of deliverance. It's a song of liberation from idols and Satan and the devil and the world and the flesh. But not only does it talk about the song of Moses, it also references the song of the Lamb. The song of the Lamb is the new song. It's found in Revelation 5, 9. Do you have that one, guys, or no? No? Okay. Revelation 5, 9. These saints are singing the song of Moses. 
because the, the Jews during Jacob's trouble will also be delivered. And they've overcome Satan by the blood of the lamb. Hey, listen, we know what's happening. Everyone knows there's a drone strike in Jerusalem. I've said it since I've been here for eight years. You don't look around what's going in Ottawa. You don't look around at who's on the throne in London. You don't look at Washington, D.C. Lord knows you don't want to look there. But that's another sermon for another day. You don't look at Beijing. You don't look at the Paris Peace Accords. You don't look at these things. If you want to know what's happening, what's coming up next, you look at Jerusalem. Keep your eye on what God keeps his eye on. And there, right now we know there's drone strikes are happening and things like that are getting back. Keep your eye on that. And then keep your eye on the eastern sky as the old song goes. But I want you to know they're going to one day, those people are going to say, Jesus is the Lamb of God. Jesus is the Son of God. And they will sing that song forever up in heaven. Notice the words. Remember, it says just and true. These words are spoken while watching God send judgment down on earth in the future. Send uh, destruction and death. They're saying just and true is our God. That he is right to do this. How many of you ever gotten a speeding ticket or got in trouble at school and you knew you deserved it? Raise your hand beside me. The rest of you are a bunch of liars. Amen. <laughs> you knew you deserved it. How many of you kids or were kids 50, 100 years ago, you got busted and you knew your mom caught you because your mom, like my mom, had eyes in the front and eyes on the side and eyes in the back of her head. She always knows. And you deserved it. And it was justice. And you know it. Say amen. How many times now? You know, think about this, though. How many of you ever had this recollection where you got in trouble and you didn't do anything? And you didn't do anything wrong. And there was no reason for punishment. But you still got in trouble. Yes, of course. It happens. It was unjust. But when God sends the armies to the earth, when God allows the battle of Armageddon to happen, when God punishes those who take the mark, when God destroys this earth and recycles it and remakes it and revitalizes it and, and gets it ready, he is just and he is true. Now here's the thing. And when he sends people to hell that you love and I love, and when he sends your friends there and my friends there and people that sat in this room sometimes to hell, he is still just. He is still just. He is still right, and he is still true. It's called justice. And he will serve justice. Now, he's a God of love. How many understand that same God that's going to send those people to hell? That's not fair. That's not fair. That same God said, you know what? You're right. It's not, well, excuse me for saying that. But you know what? He said, you know what? I don't want you to go there. I'm going to hang here naked. I'm going to hang here bleeding. I'm going to hang here probably with my intestines hanging out. I'm going to hang here soaked blood red and dirt covered head to toe i'm going to be beaten and i never did anything wrong but i'm going to take it for you that's a god of love that's a beautiful story i have been so blessed i've been so blessed like the song went this morning you need to see that yes god is love but yes god is also a god of justice and so the Jews that believe on God that are up in heaven and the martyrs that believe on God up in heaven, they'll sing the song of Moses, but they will also sing the song of the Lamb, the new song of the Lamb. And I want you to notice with me in verse 4. The Bible says this, Who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name? For thou art holy, and for all nations shall come and worship before thee. For thy judgments are made manifest. Now, I'm not going to go too long on this worship, but I, I, I really need you to get a hold of this thing. Pastor Pittman, stop screaming. We're Baptist. We don't act like that. Pastor Pittman, calm down. This is Winnipeg, Canada. We do not behave in such a fashion. You don't know your God very well if that's your thought process. Somebody say amen. amen. Okay. If you study worship from Genesis to Revelation, do you know what always happens? People are doing one of two things, one of two things, one of two things, one of two things. They're either raising hands, head is optional, whether it's up, whether it's down, raising hands. Pastor Pittman, this is a Baptist church. We don't raise our hands. Well, they did in the Bible. They raised their hands. They either bowed their head or they looked up to heaven. 
Or number two, they got down on their knees while they still can. <laughs> and they bowed themselves before the Lord and they worshiped and humbled themselves. Do you understand this is a physical manifestation of humility before God? That's why we do altar calls. That's why we pray. Now, I don't know if I've ever said this before, but I know I've said the first part, not the second part. My family and I pray every Saturday night together as a family. That's our family prayer meeting. I'm not talking about family devotions and, and family um, uh, altar or any of that. But I'm talking about we pray for services. We pray for all the Sunday school teachers. We pray for the singing. We pray for lost visitors. We pray for people to be convicted. We've been doing this for decades. But when we do this, we kneel down on the floor while we still can. Because he is worthy of worship. And he is worthy of getting down on my knees. And he is worthy of my children. My kids have been doing, they're almost like Catholics. They spend so much time on their knees. Somebody say amen or at least laugh at my good jokes. All right? And so we do that when we get humble before God. I'm not getting down. I don't have to. I don't have to bow my head to pray. I don't have to. I don't have to. You're right. You don't have to. But it shows something, doesn't it? Sure does. It shows an attitude of ingratitude. Humility. Humility. See, I don't care. I've been saved for so long, I don't care. I'll get down. I don't care who sees me. I will pray on my knees. I don't care because I care about what he thinks. And you've heard me say this. I know you've heard me say this. I'm not preaching to the church. I preach for a congregation and an audience of one. Now, you get all to get to listen in, but I preach for him to you. And if he is pleased and you're all mad at me, it's okay. Somebody say that's right. Yeah? If he's happy and you're not, it's okay. But if he's happy and you're happy, man, double win. And if he's happy and you're happy and my wife's happy, because you know the sermons at my house at dinner on Sunday are harder than the sermons in here. Somebody say amen. amen. Nobody can preach like a preacher's wife, I tell you what. Anyway, and so I humble myself and worship him. Worship is always connected to humility of body uh, position or whatever you call it. Not body language, but position and you get down on your face. It's always about humility. But the Bible says that all nations, in verse 4, who shall fear thee, O Lord? For thou art holy, for all nations shall come and worship before thee. You're going to be entering in his presence. How many here have ever been in the presence of someone? And don't feel bad about it. I'm just looking. You've been scared being in their presence. You were like a little bit shaky or nervous. I'll give you a, I, I was standing in the presence of a three-star general, and I was very nervous. Can somebody tell me one that you, were, you met or you were a little bit nervous? Do you, you know, do you know what I mean? You, <laughs> amen. I've been nervous in the presence of your dad. <laughs> he had a big gun, and there was a big bear, and he's going to touch the bear. Hey, listen, but that's the same as God. That's the same as God. Yeah, you should fear God, but you need to know God deeply loves you. Amen. Amen. All right, so, good one. Somebody else? You've been in the presence of somebody? Yes. First time you cross the border, the intimidation of the government, a man under authority, telling one go and goeth, and another one come and he stayeth. <laughs> Did visa return, do you turn right? Crossing the border for the first time, dealing with government officials. Anyone else? Well, it happens. We get afraid in the presence of powerful people, okay? But we need to realize that the most powerful human being on earth is still going to tremble and quake and shake in the presence of our holy God. Whew, he's a good God. And I'd rather get down on my face and be afraid of him than to worry about what people think of me. I've met professional athletes. I've met prime ministers. Uh, briefly, of course, all of them. But the Bible says that all nations are going to be up there. There's going to be people from everywhere, and every tongue, and every tribe, and every kindred are going to be there. Roberto, can you come stand up here for a minute? Just stand up here. I just need, I need a good-looking guy up here for once. All right, let's see. Let's see. Ricky, you okay to come up? You don't have to. I won't make, but I'd like you to come up. You understand? Okay. Okay. James, come on up. Will you come up? Come up. Come up. Come up. It's okay. Roy, why don't you come up? I always make kids come up in my sermons. It's about time I get somebody older than me. Oh, stand in the middle, okay? 
Right, Roy's coming up. Roy, Roy, there you go. Okay, look, you better get used to it. You be okay, this is not a committee stop. I I've got about five minutes left, and you guys want to have back slap and fellowship. Listen to me. The Bible says all nations, all nations, all nations, all nations will worship him up in heaven at the end of time. There's going to be people from Latin America, Asia, Africa, Manitoba. <laughs> you understand? You might as well get used to it. They're going to be there forever. All nations will worship him. He's the one who made him, 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 and him, and all the diversities of the planet that they represent. Are you still with me? Somebody say amen. amen. Okay, it's important you understand that God will, wants all nations to be there. Now listen, here's the important part. Somebody needs to speak Spanish to tell those nations. Some, well, somebody kind of needs to know Tagalog, or at least English, right? Everybody speaks English, right? Tagalog, to maybe reach some people in the mountain people or something. Somebody needs to under, uh, Swahili, 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 okay. To reach these people. Somebody, <laughs> bonjour, monsieur, comment ça va? <laughs> I, I, I'm going to get a t-shirt, I'm going to get made and say, welcome to Canada, now speak French. <laughs> okay, somebody needs, to, somebody needs to learn to speak and communicate with English-speaking people. Do you understand? All nations means everybody, and you don't get to pick and choose who you give the gospel to. I have given the gospel to Jews, I have given the gospel to Muslims, I have given the gospel to Middle Eastern people, I have given the gospel to Europeans, I have given the gospel to black people from Africa, I have given the gospel to Asian people from Asia, I have given the gospel to gypsies, the most hated people on earth. I have given the gospel to. Have you given the gospel to somebody? Have you left a track somewhere? Are the nations going to be there because you believe in Jesus and because you want to serve Jesus and you know you're going to wind up worshiping Jesus forever? What are we complaining about? What are we focusing on? The God of laziness? The God of idleness? The God of selfishness? The God of us for and no more? I got mine. I don't need any more. Hey, listen, you're here for a reason. Now go meet that reason and go meet that need and go preach that message and get somebody saved. And by the way, women are to preach the gospel just as much as men. Children that are spirit and dwelt are responsible to preach the gospel just as much as the 12 apostles were. Man, we had a wonderful time. We had a little girl get saved here uh, Thursday night. I won't, I'm not going to go into it too far. But we had a little girl get saved here Thursday night, and it was so exciting. It was so exciting to see her because we've been praying for months. But now, wait a minute. And it is exciting when a whole life is saved, but we saw a half-life saved too. Guy walked in off the streets, homeless, a wreck. He says, man, I've been listening to demons, and the demons are talking to me, and and they're just messing with my head. You know what? I said, but Jesus can cure you. Jesus can save you. Jesus can fix this. You just got to let him. And we knelt down right back there. I said, you serious about this? Get on your knees. We knelt down and prayed. And he trusted Christ as Savior. Thank God for the half-life. Thank God for the whole life that was saved. Y'all, are you following me? But somebody needs to reach these people. And it's going to take work. And it's not enough to come to church. It's not enough to put in the plate. It's not enough to sing the songs. You've got to make an effort to reach people with the gospel of Jesus Christ because then when we get to heaven, we're all, we're all going to get down on our knees and we're all going to cry, holy, I should make them get down, shouldn't I? I don't think half of them can. <laughs> holy, holy, holy Lord. And we're going to praise him forever. The only thing you're taking with you to heaven are the people you witness to and lead to Jesus Christ. And that is it. Your diplomas ain't going, your house ain't going, your 401k, Roth, IRA, your PPP, your retirement pension plan, with RPP, none of it's coming with you. Your gold is staying here. All you're taking are the people, lives that you touched with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Are you touching the nations as a person individually? Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the moments that we have. You guys can go ahead down.
We thank you for the time that we have. We thank you for the opportunity to be here. We pray, Lord Jesus, that you would speak to our hearts about sharing our faith and getting off of our blessed assurance and living for you and doing what's right and serving you and seeing you on Monday morning when we leave this place. Lord, I pray that I was faithful as you've called me to preach today. I pray that it helped Holy Spirit of God. I pray it touched someone. I pray that it spoke to someone's life today. May someone be saved if no one's saved. May someone be convicted about their lack of faithfulness. Lord, we pray it work. And no one looking around, how many here would raise your hand and say, Pastor Pittman has a testimony. I love Jesus Christ. I'm a worshiper of Jesus Christ. I follow him. I'm going to raise my hand. I am going to heaven. I am saved. There's no doubt. I'm trusting only in the shed blood of Jesus. Raise your hand right now if you're a saved person. You know Christ as your Savior. You know Christ as your Savior. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. If you're not, raise your hand. Please hear my voice. Hear my voice well. Let me put your hands down. How many here would say, Pastor Pittman, not sure. Not sure I'm a Christian. I'm not sure I'm saved. I'm not sure. I don't know anyone this morning. There's always one or two that raise their hand that this time. I'm not a Christian. I don't know. Or no, I'm not a Christian. Would you raise your hand? Anyone at all? Anyone at all? Anyone? How many here would say, I need to be baptized? I have decided to follow Jesus. And the first step is biblical baptism. Anyone this morning? Would you raise your hand this morning and say, the Lord's spoken to me about baptism? How many here would say, I know God spoke to me in, in another area? Pastor, nothing you said in the invitation. Yes, ma'am, but I know God spoke during the sermon, during the preaching. Would you raise your hand? God bless you, folks. Anyone else? Yes, sir, God bless you. Yes, sir, God bless you. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am, God bless you. Father, let's stand to our feet now. And as Haley begins to play this morning, if you need to come forward as she begins to play, as she begins to play, you come forward. Go ahead, guys, go now. already started to come. Just come. Pray. Is there someone you need to pray for? Is there something you need to pray for? There's lots of broken hearts and hurting people in this room. Do you need to come and pray? Are you weary, heavy hearted? Tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. Come and humble yourself and worship before your king. Come and kneel before your God. Humble heart is the only way to approach a holy heaven. God bless you. Some are coming that can barely kneel. And if you can't, just come forward and sit in the front row. Come and sit in the front row. bless you. Some are still coming. Some are still coming even now. If, if you need to come, if the Holy Spirit says come, come. Don't worry about what I think. Don't worry about what anyone here thinks. You need the Lord, you come. You need to tell it to Jesus. You come. Do you need to come forward? Come talk to me if you need to come. Maybe you want to talk about being saved. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift and the privilege of being saved, but not only being saved, being able to be a participant and a Father, a participant in a local New Testament church. I pray you bless us for being here. I pray that somebody was helped. I pray that somebody was touched. And I pray, Lord, first that you were pleased by what was said and what was sung. We look forward to singing your praises forever in glory. But until then, help us to carry on, Lord Jesus, we ask in your name. Amen. Well, you